What is up guys? You know who it is, it's Chris. Welcome back to my reaction channel. You know, it's been a while since I've reacted to internet historian video. You know, it's been a while since like weeks ago already. So yeah. Today we're gonna be reacting to the story of Kony 2012. You know the drill guys. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button for post notifications. Also if you have any suggestions, comment down below. If you wanna see what my reaction videos, head down to my playlist. With that being said, let's get into the intro. Oh, this is gonna be good. Kony 2012. Shit, this is gonna be 2012 is the story of a man, Jason Russell, and his relentless quest to stop Ugandan warlord, Joseph Kony. Let's begin with the action start. On March 5th, 2012, a charity called Invisible Children published a high production video called Kony 2012. It was an awareness campaign seeking to mobilize action to capture or kill Ugandan warlord, Joseph Kony. <laughs> and the goal of the story was to make Kony famous. 30 minutes long, it really tried to pull at your heartstrings. Yeah. At the end of my life, I want to say that the world we've left behind is one that Gavin can be proud of. A place that doesn't allow Joseph Kony's and child soldiers. Also, and guys, little Gavin I don't know this proud was a Because thing. it took off it like no video game. on YouTube ever had. We wanted 500,000 views in the whole year of 2012. We got 500,000 views in the first three hours. It received 100 Damn, million okay. views in the first six days. 1.4 million likes. Click that link in the Let's description the below. Line. They clicked it so hard the website went down and their email was so inundated that the service provider assumed it was an attack and temporarily pulled the plug. The Times named it the most viral video ever. It raised the charity over $20 million. People really went fucking bananas for this video <laughs> and those Ugandan kids. Four million hashtags. People changed their Facebook profiles. So you knew it was a big deal. Whoa, for real? A fan-made mobile Soccer game. Berg changes are you woke about Joseph Kony? Yeah, but are you woke enough to get a tattoo? No! People were up for pretty much anything to stop Kony, as long as it didn't involve any practical action. One like equals Jesus one Christ. saved child. But who is Joseph Kony and what's all the fuss? Well, he's the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA. My God, you're greasy. <laughs> and he really is one of the most evil people living today. Imagine the worst crime you can think of committing, and he'll have done it thousands of times over. Takes children, makes them kill their parents, and eat their parents. What? The surviving girls will be kept as sex slaves, and the boys conscripted into the LRA as child soldiers. I know, it's kind of a bummer. It's all part of a civil conflict that's been going on for 30 years. We'll get into the details later, but for now, consider this our one-dimensional bad guy. Gotta get a, a red flag. And he is our protagonist, no. Jason Russell, like the Gabriel figurehead of Kony 2012 and Invisible Children. But he has a child, so... He's a devout Christian, yeah. stereotypically Californian. And I do consider myself a refined valley dude. But he has a bad boy side, too. <laughs> So it all starts in 2003, when, as a naive and aspiring filmmaker, he goes to Uganda with two friends in search of a story. While driving through a rural village... A car was shot in front of us by a rebel army who was led by a guy named Joseph Kony. They drive to a city for safety okay. and find this. It turns out it's part of a nightly routine. Kids live in the villages, but commute to the city to sleep there to avoid being kidnapped in midnight raids by the LRA. Thousands and thousands of kids without an adult in sight. Jason had found his story and a cause. It must have made a real impression on him because for the next 10 years he dedicated himself almost exclusively to trying to Whoa. improve things in Uganda and stop Kony. Yo, Kony 2012 was the culmination, Kony, but in the preceding years he tried a bunch of other schemes. This, the bracelet campaign. This, twice daily broadcast about where the LRA is and where they're active. Uh, and this. Do what we always do. Dance. What do you mean? 
Oh no! This is all real. <laughs> no! <laughs> We're on a mission, but you got a deep inside your mind. Yo, no, bro, no, no, no. <laughs> what? Yo, at this point I'm questioning his gender, you know? <laughs> God damn it, this is cringing me. It needs attention and attempts to make it sparkle and shine. Woo. We gotta shake it up and break it bro, up. Bro, no, bro. Come on, bro. Naturally, questions have been raised about his sexual orientation. All these yeah. other rumors, too, that you were gay. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've heard those rumors. Yeah. <laughs> My parents started a bro, large children's theater organization, bro. so what I am like theatrical. Theatrical. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Straight men are allowed but, to enjoy musicals. Still, it's current though, like, here. Jesus Back to Coney 2012. So the video lays out a plan called Cover the Night. Here's what you do. Pay $30 for your super special Coney action kit. Whoa. Hey, That's I nice. No shit, In the kit you'll find five so items. Good. Button. Bracelet. Stickers. Shirt. And these posters. Then, on April 20th, in the dead of night, go out and vandalize your town with awareness. And wake up to hundreds of Isn't thousands that of posters demanding justice vandalize. every corner. Really? It was going to be amazing. Everyone was on board. The countdown to April 20th had begun. And all Jason and co. had to do was keep the momentum going and not fuck it up. Oh. It's the new way... Move Greasy boy After versus this movie is not without critics. Critics yeah, say the film manipulates the facts. <laughs> simplifying the story. We're simplifying a wildly complex That's the issue. message is too late. Joseph Coney and his forces have been significantly reduced. Pro-war activism. Utterly naive. Of course. And next week. Me just gonna jump These white westerners sort of getting yeah. a bandwagon, and actually they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. A day or two later, the heady excitement gave way to more down-to-earth analysis. Media commentators started making scathing critiques of the video. And testimony from Uganda wasn't entirely positive either. It's unfortunate that we can have people who are merchandising, but using people's problems. Then it got oh. really serious. Teenage girls started weighing in. Ponies, right? My mom, and my mom laughs and goes, he died like my five years ago. This is wrong, by the way. Yeah, but it was seen wrong. by four million people. From a source of my mum said it, so it must be true. <laughs> the term slacktivism started cropping up more and more. Legitimate so questions were asked how will the money donated be spent? That invisible children would send would have to go to the Ugandan military. Why did you put your son in the film? You know, why would you put your son in the film? You know, why did you put yourself in the film? Those questions about our sincerity. Why, are, asking why are they saying about... Kony is in Uganda when he's actually in the Central African Republic? Invisible Children oh, wasn't popular shit, among other charities either. They were hogging the limelight. Scam. And they released Coney 2012 just two days before International Women's Day. A critical fundraising time for some. Even the Ugandan Prime Minister took a few jabs. We do not need a slick video on YouTube for us to take notice. Slick video. Once people well, started feeling misled, first, they turned against the organization and squared the blame on one person. The pressure was building. Online backlash and a hectic schedule was starting to take a toll. My phone was getting 10 text messages every second. It was just... Millions of supporters on one side, millions of critics on the other. On and on and on. Make Coney famous? Well, it made Jason famous too. And the pressure <laughs> kept increasing. Bro, he was flying all over the country to spread his message. He took the red eye to New York, landed at five in the morning. Working around the clock. On the Today Show, People Magazine, Reuters. By day three, I was in LA doing interview after interview after interview. 17 interviews in 48 hours. Wow. So he was Holy sleeping shit. less and becoming more erratic. Not being able to sleep, not being able to stop my racing mind. He's Criticism stop, from every it? direction. Then it was like, He's gonna stop, you're right? the worst. You're terrible. And Coney's dead. They started saying the whole project was for his ego, or based on greed. And not just criticism, responsibility. How are you going to stop children from being murdered, Jason? You promised a solution, Jason. When are you going to deliver Coney? 
By the end of that day, oh, shit. my mind was exhausted. To release the pressure, he and his family tried to take a couple of days off by going to Palm Springs. But people recognized him there too, so they hid away in their hotel room with the curtains closed. Jason was starting to crack. Paranoia. Delusions of grandeur. He went with his family to see the Lorax, and he thought the film was speaking to him directly. Voices in Jason's head told him that he oh, needed to shit, get to New bro. York in the next 12 hours, or Coney He's gonna get mad. would win. Whatever that meant. Then, he stripped off all of his clothes and Oof. ran out into the street. <laughs> I was on a street in San Diego, bro. totally naked. Boss, and boss. <laughs> Yo, I feel bad for this guy, bro. I feel bad, but at the same time, I don't know, bro. I, I got a mixed feeling about him, you know. But I feel bad for this guy, bro. The media, bro, the media, what do you expect? They're gonna jump into it, they're gonna put pressure on your shit until you snap, you know? God damn, bro. I'm crazy out of my mind. Shit. Someone driving by in a car took a film, a video on their phone, and they sold it to TMZ for $30,000. And then my People naked gotta, crazy bro, what the fuck? mess went viral as well. Some have said that he was jacking it and that he was on drugs. Neither is true. It's just a very distressed man having a mental episode. Were you also yeah. masturbating? Did I hear that too? No one who was there ever said that that was happening. Yeah. One of the, I mean, I'm naked, so it's not a far extension yeah. of, you know, imagination. Well, he was taken so to the hospital, <laughs> not jail. Uh, police say when they showed up, they didn't see any of that and was taken to a local medical facility that he was not arrested. Of. And there, he thought the staff were trying to kill him just one of those things where I'm like, I don't believe what you're saying. You're trying to kill me. He ran around in his underwear, kicking in doors until eventually he was subdued and sedated. You come back to yourself as you know yourself. Oh. Two weeks. Two weeks? Fuck. Two weeks, mm -hmm. whoa. Yeah. Later on, one Sharona Reed tried to sue Mr. Russell for the trauma of having to see him do naked calisthenics. Yeah, as far yeah. as I can tell, though, yeah, that yeah. lawsuit went nowhere. So, lawsuit, can you think of anything else, else that's seriously? worse than running around naked going like this on TMZ? Well, maybe one thing. Yeah. While all of this was happening, the countdown to the day of action was still ticking. Thousands of kits had been sold. Get ready for an awareness campaign so effective you'll think you're living in Uganda. The kids rolled out into the street. <laughs> Selfie sticks and posters ready. Yo. Let's do it. Let's save those kids. We're changing the world. What's up oh with the sound? God. Yo. Yes. But it wasn't all well intended. Some took it as a chance to vandalize their neighborhood with impunity. <laughs> the adults were left to the mess. And despite the impression you might get from this fancy montage, Bro. the turnout was abysmal. Here are some figures. Toronto, 50,000 oh, people yeah. registered. Real attendance, oh, yeah. 50. Sydney, 18,000 people registered. Real attendance, 12. Montreal, 4,800 registered. Real attendance, Bro. zero. Instead, they cancelled their event and put up a post calling Invisible Children a fraud organization. This, this is people, what bro. 4 million Coney hashtags people, as gets as they don't do now, shit, they I bet you want to know where Invisible <laughs> Children, Jason Russell, and Coney are now. But before I tell you that, I want to go on two quick tangents of things I found while researching. In the Coney 2012 video, you'll see this guy, Louis Marino Ocampo, Chief Prosecutor for the International Criminal Court. This Ooh, would be the organization guy, that charges okay. Coney if he was ever caught. Well. In 2017, a bunch of Louis' emails were leaked, and they detailed one hell of a caper to catch Coney <laughs> and bring him to justice. I'm not making any of the following up, right? Here's the plan. Lure Coney out of the jungle with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie as bait. Straight from a Hollywood what? movie. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt attempting to arrest an African woman. What is this, woman. Hollywood movie or so some shit? The A-list couple would fly to the edge of the jungle where Coney is hiding and call him up with an invitation to dinner. Coney, starstruck, 
would of course say <laughs> yes. He'd show up, presumably bottle of wine in hand, yeah, and ready to mingle. Then, imagine his, his shock. It was a trap all along. Special forces <laughs> would pop out from behind the salad bar and get their guy. One idea appears to have been for Angelina Jolie to lure him to a private dinner where he would be arrested. It was a foolproof plan, but unfortunately, it was never realized. Once Mr. Jolie stopped responding to Louis' weird oh, emails, shit. Ocampo approached George Clooney for use of his spy satellite. The chief prosecutor had also attempted to recruit George Clooney this guy in a plot to fly spy satellites over yeah, Libya. So he really uh, want to yes, be in the spotlight. George Clooney partnered with a satellite company to spy on Al Bashar of Sudan. Oh shit. Anyway, he responded that the satellite wasn't it's powerful. Not even legal, enough. Though. So then Ocampo oh. moved on to his backup date. Sean Penn, whom he invited to the UN security meeting in South Sudan. What? And there were some people having fun with Coney 2012 as well. Yeah. Turns out Coney looks a lot he like Carl Weathers in the movie with Predator. This guy, bro. <laughs> so an idea was formed. Take this screenshot from Predator, post it on Facebook, and say how great he is without mentioning the name. Then oh. wait for some slacktivists <laughs> to immediately assume it's Joseph Coney. Then you good call shit. them racist. It was good for a few minutes of fun. Then they tried good it on shit, the official bro. meetup pages. <laughs> Promptly deleted. And we're back. So get a load of this total car crash, dumpster fire, shitstorm, diaper hurricane, am I right, guys? <laughs> well, no. Despite all the mishaps and poor turnout, Coney 2012 was a massive success. The goal was to yeah, make an obscure warlord in rural Uganda a Famous. household name. And they succeeded. A reach in the hundreds of millions on a budget of about 1.5 million dollars. Any marketing agency would kill for that. In fact, seven years later, you probably clicked on this video because you have some vague notion of Coney and that video already. Nope. Now, let me give you a very brief rundown on where everyone is. Then let's get out of here. Invisible children, outside of long-term and small-scale projects, they've largely ceased operations. Joseph Coney, he's still out there, but his army is shrinking and splintering. He is effectively in hibernation. <laughs> and Jason Russell. He's no longer with Invisible Children. He's also been breakdown free since 2012, but he's still doing the activism thing. Look, oh. I've had to gloss over so many details in this video. Where, where the money and there at, are though? so many more questions to be answered. Go? But I don't want this video to be an hour long or to take two months more to make. So I'm going to round this one off with a Q&A on the second channel. What about that $20 million they raised? Why didn't the US military or the Ugandan military ever just bomb the shit out of Kony? What did Kony have to say about the video? All of these questions, and a ton more, plus any questions you may have of your own. Uganda want to see it. <laughs> Yo, that's good shit, bro. Yo, <laughs> that is the story of Kony, it's an open and it's story. <laughs> Bro, the video still gets me, bro. <laughs> the one with dances, you know what I'm saying, bro? Shit. Gay as hell, bro. I don't have anything against gay, but that shit, that shit's funny, so. <laughs> but hey, you know, I just wanna say that whenever media jumps into shit, you know, jumps into something, it, tur it turns into shit, you know, it turns into a mess. They, they, they make more chaos. Than anything else, you know, they, they put everything else in shambles. No, now I don't know this Russell guy, I don't know if it's a fucking scam or it's a genuinely good guy, but hey, you know what I'm saying, bro? I'd rather choose Cone, I'd rather choose Russell over Cone. The guy lets their children eat their parents after he killed the parents, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's disgusting as hell. Also, guys. Is it a failure though? Like, if no one attends, like, bro. Many people buy the merchants, you know? Merchandise, you know what I'm saying? Many people buy it, but, like, only few people attended the actual event. So, is it a failure or a success? You know? Goddamn. But, hey, that's it, guys. Hope you like the video. Like the video. Show me some love by subscribing to my channel. Hit the bell button for post notifications. If you have any suggestions, comment down below. If you want to see more of my reactions, head down to my playlist. With that being said, I'll see you guys soon.